But um, this is all, all my way of saying we won't be talking about Jeffrey right. Epstein today. However, the things we do for you, sweet, dear listener, let me tell you. Matt Felix and I have just got done watching about <laughs> two hours, probably, worth it of content. It felt like eight. Well, we, we've just got done perusing the incredible selection of original programming that is now available on the new streaming service, Fox Nation. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have subscribed to Fox Nation. And let me tell you, it is worth every penny. It is. It's like, have you ever imagined what the content that's too stupid and low rent, even for Fox News or yeah. Fox Business Channel is like? Do we, you ever want to see 10 shows all hosted by Greg, Gut Greg Gutfeld? <laughs> then, then please subscribe to Fox Nation this feels right like now. Fox Nation, like for Greg Gutfeld, it feels like a birthday party that Greg Gutfeld's mom organized. <laughs> I, I have to say, like today, you know, I had a good day. I slept eight hours. I woke up before noon. Eve. I woke up at 1030 today. I went to the gym. I ate really well. But I feel like I just pulled an all-nighter and just ate brown meals. I feel like I have indigestion. That network gives you the feeling of indigestion. It's just very brown doldrum Excuse pumped through me. your brain. Yeah, there's a lot of gut felt. You, know, you can get up in that <laughs> gut felt if you want. But there's also, they organize it not just by the show, but by the personalities. <laughs> yes, yes. Which means that you have a choice of dozens of identical blonde women with probably Fox News mandated breast implants, <laughs> all of whose names sound like William Sonoma catalog items. <laughs> Yeah, what was the, Ainsley Earnhardt? Ainsley, Ainsley Earnhardt, yeah. Yeah. Carly uh, Shimkus, like, <laughs> Cat Timp. Cat uh, Timp is not a real floor, one. Florpy flat slop. I just want to read a little bit. This is from the, uh, the Daily Beast coverage of it. So it's a subscription-driven online video channel. It's like like th this is their Netflix, and like I guarantee you, like the dream is to have like original TV shows and movies and crap like that. But uh, it says here. Do you think old people invite each other over to watch Fox Nation streaming and fuck? Well, no, like old, old people are like they're like it's like uh they all share one Fox Nation password. And they're like, hook me up with that Fox Nation password. I need, I need to watch. Uh, I need to watch First Thoughts with Tom, Tommy Laren. But uh, I just want to read for you. It says, uh, at first glance, Fox Nation appears to be a cornucopia of fresh content. A closer look, however, reels most of the programming to simply be old far right docu quote documentaries with titles like The Great Food Stamp Binge <laughs> and, <laughs> oh and United God. Nations Blood Money, most of which aired on Fox News or elsewhere up to 10 years ago. Though, though many have misleading air dates. There is a Greg Gutfeld hosted program about car chases titled You Couldn't Stop Watching. We didn't actually see that one. Um, there's uh, Stuart Varney is on it. All the stars oh, are All your it. star yeah. favorites are here. Uh, 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 some Joseph Mengele of the Fourth. <laughs> this is like Biffy yeah. Caltrops. This is like the sort of Derwilliger's battalion of media. <laughs> Just, I know, I know you mean Derwangler, but oh, Derwangler, whatever. Derwilliger, that's all those like side, side I'm show. I'm sorry, yeah. all your culture's no, names just, are stupid. That, it's a Simpsons thing. It makes it sound like it was Sideshow Bob had a death <laughs> squad in World War II. You might so, have. I mean. Again, just just doing a a, a a brief sampling of of what's on offer on Fox Nation, the streaming service. Uh, here's what is apparent: the uh, production values for this are being kept rock bottom. Is you know, like is how they're going to make money on this for sure. Uh, like most of the stuff looks like like the swipes and like title cards and shit look like it was made with iMovie. And oh, absolute! Do you remember those <laughs> yeah. old embedded videos that Trump used to post on Twitter? That was like my trip to Asia. It looked exactly like those, like with the the same like slow swipes and shit like that. And, and like you know, we've we've taken it for granted now that that since its inception, Fox News has been just an organ of propaganda for the Republican Party. Like Roger Ailes founded it with that express purpose. But what's fascinating, I guess, about Fox News, but especially Fox Nation, because this is really like the low rent shit where they can. You know, really get some of that more that that sort of more pure product out there, that raw shit. Yeah, is like not only is it an organ of propaganda for the Republican Party, it's n it's actually not. It is there is absolutely not a shred of pretense that anything on this at all is not just pure propaganda for Trump specifically. And we'll talk about the the one main thing that we watched all of. Yeah, there was one 
There's one. Good piece there's of one actual that we watched one, yeah. literally all 40 minutes of, and it was one of the genuinely one of the funniest and most fascinating things I've ever seen. But before we get there, I think we should uh, let the listeners in on some of the other programs that are available now streaming on Fox Nation. Okay, so there's this awful quiz show where. Wait, we- I, I, look, can we go through them? I have, okay, I have, I have all down. All right, let's start with T- Tommy's first thoughts. Yeah, so first thoughts. I kind of like the name of it because it just like it just implies that it's just some half baked shit she <laughs> she threw out there whenever she heard like the headline. Not even read the story, but it's just YouTube videos. It, they're it's just you- YouTube videos for like parents who they tried to get on YouTube, but they entered one letter wrong and went to some Russian site that steals your credit card <laughs> info specifically for old people that make that mistake. And it's sort of it's pointless. It's like it's like it's just her two minute kind of rants. And uh, she really sucks at narrating things. She like doesn't have even worse than me. Yeah, the first one was about uh, the gas protests in Paris, and she's like, you know, memo to liberals: this is what happens when you raise taxes on gas. And basically, it started out about how horrible it was that like all these people were injured and the cars were on fire all over Paris. But then she basically came around to supporting the protests because no, I mean she was basically rural, in favor of them the whole time. Yeah, they're rural French people protesting against big government gas taxes. So she's basically in favor of those protests. French tea cuts. <laughs> what what is a good what is like an equivalent to a bungler that they would say about Macron? I don't know enough French. Ooh. This is, I, I this is a listener quiz. Yeah, 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 listener yeah. quiz. If you can think of something a French teacup would call Macron, you win. I don't. I don't know. I'll buy you a fucking car. <laughs> I won't remember to do it. You won't get mad at me. Uh, Tommy's first thoughts was mostly just fucking pablum. Just like all her videos are supposed to like you know really trigger people and get like sixty year olds to be like, oh, ma'am, I would love it if you took my son's arm in marriage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but there was one thing I liked. Because uh, it just betrays like what a bad thinker she is. Where she goes, it looked like the scenes of a sci-fi battle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it just like it looks like any like riot in a city. There's no sci-fi <laughs> shit. Just a fucking dunce. And then the second one was, of course, about you know the uh, immigrant invasion that's currently ongoing. That was actually a big theme of many of these shows. It was basically, it was, you flip through it, it was just a bunch of ham-faced monsters making using uh, joke voices to make fun of. Uh, uh, child uh, migrants being gassed. Oh, Dios mío, there's oh, gas in me. Oh, there's a spicy meatball. Yeah. Oh, no, this is a hot tamale. That was basically it. I like, mean, fucking the, the, the Crisco basted face of fucking uh, uh, Harlan Hill. Just, or no, not Harlan Hill. Todd Harlan, Starnes. Harlan, Harlan, Harlan Hill's dad. Todd <laughs> yeah. Harlan Hill's dad, Todd Starnes, going, eh, well, well. Wait, meanwhile, just if he underwent like a fraction of the hardship of any one of these people, this guy is basically on the verge of death and he makes six figures and lives in Park Slope. How the hell would he even survive on the fucking Honduran border? Um, actually, one of the arguments Tommy made against the caravan, and she was like, you keep hearing in the media that all oh, these poor people, they've walked so far while they've ignored reports it's about some of them hitchhiking and taking <laughs> buses, and it was just like, yeah, some of them came, uh, the you know, traveled this distance hanging on to a semi. Uh, yeah, lazy. I, I like how yeah, the demographic of people who will like wage a crusade against a Ruby Tuesday that doesn't <laughs> o- honor a two-year expired coupon because they drove 15 minutes. They're just like, yeah, well, you know, some of them even got to sit down for some of the rides. So. <laughs> T- Tommy Laren's uh, first thoughts. Uh, I I grade it. Tommy Laren's only thoughts. Am I right, folks? Zing. Yeah, uh, ju- yeah just dull. <laughs> just okay. fucking. No, and the other thing is, this is a lot of this content is just repurposed shit from Fox News that they're using to pad out their offerings because they, they they've promised a lot of shows that aren't here yet. The Steve Ducey cooking show is not here yet. Yeah. Uh, the show where the wrestling oaf. Uh, g- uh, to, talks about how PC culture is bad isn't on there yet. Well, so they're using their so those Tommy's thoughts things. Those are from her hits on regular Fox News, and they're just throwing them mm-hmm. on there. So I guess like a lot of like some of the segments are called meet. There's one segment called Meet Tommy. Yeah. That was like where she literally goes back to her high school in South Dakota and walks around town. And then there's one called Meet Tyrus. So I guess they're trying to like introduce yeah. you to these sort of new, younger Fox yeah. News, Fox Don't Nation. Don't be scared of them. Yeah, yeah. They're not <laughs> here to steal your clock radio. <laughs> uh, we'll get to those. So uh, Tommy's first thoughts, again, just like two minute clips of her rants that are repurposed from Fox News. You, you already know that. I'm sure you've maybe even already seen it. You can pretty much guess what they are. Okay, speaking of dull... 
let's move on to the wise guys. This now, is, the wise yeah. guys, you're talking about you're talking about some characters, okay? You're talking about imagine this show the, the wise guys should actually have been called uh, the five people you meet and have dinner <laughs> with in hell. Yeah, this we, is imagine a totally empty restaurant where you have to sit at a table and listen to Byron York, yes. Bill Bennett, oh, fuck yeah. Mark Penn, mm-hmm. Molly Hemingway, yes. and Pat Buchanan fuck have a up. conversation for an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. That's how long that... We went from me, like uh, Tommy's First Thoughts, which was two minutes, to an hour, a 90-minute show that's filmed in an empty restaurant of liter- five corpses looking which at each other. Which is lit like the fucking... Uh, the, the room in the first Saw movie... You know, with the fluorescent lights. And it's flickering. And fucking Gary yeah, Elway's I, sawing his foot off. Just like lit in a way to make them all just look like cadavers who've been, had their shoes filled with sawdust and propped up at these fucking tables. Yeah, the lighting, now, the lighting of the entire network, actually, I noticed that it looked like the exact lighting of the pedophile couple from Running Scared. Yes, exactly. Like, like that. It, it was like it was like the lighting guy like didn't like anyone on <laughs> but, this network. Well, it doesn't help that most of the people on this network are near death. <laughs> yeah. Like my, uh, you got a guy who's a 900 years old, like like Bill Bennett or or Pat Buchanan, or a guy who looks like he's 900 because he's been eating nothing but fucking you know uh, cl- uh, Clinton uh, campaign fucking lunch tray platters <laughs> for the past 10 years. Mark Penn just this. They just look like they're all wearing diabetic support hose underneath their fucking pinstripe pants. Except, so Nick, except for Molly Hemingway. Yeah, they just fucking look good. Uh, she just looks they're, real they're, good. They're sallow, that you can see like rims under their eyes. They look like little hogs. But like the, 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 the energy is like, like, the, like Wise Guys is probably like, that's pitch, like that's probably their most mature offering. Oh, yeah, yeah. You yeah, not a, lot of, not a lot of... Uh, this is like... If the McLaughlin group, again, were held in a restaurant and lasted two no, hours. No, fuck you. The McLaughlin group <laughs> way more so much better. Yeah. The McLaughlin group fucking they ruled. Okay. Yeah. You're pimple. right. McLaughlin did. Yeah. McLaughlin was yeah. so <laughs> pimp when he would just be like, Pat, what do you think about the SS? <laughs> like, <laughs> and, Warren G. Harding was a Negro. Tony Blakely, your thoughts. Yeah. Go. And, and so this was probably the most dull television was, I've ever it seen. Was, yeah. it was, like, it felt so like this per- is like if everybody at the McLaughlin, you went to the McLaughlin group right after getting dental surgery it was it <laughs> like, was like no energy it was like fucking purgatory yeah. it was just like it was like the, the, the scene in dante's inferno where like they're walking around and everyone is like buried up to their neck in ice yeah. or something but they're talking to you about the midterm elections yeah, brutal yeah, yeah i mean you know what i noticed pat buchanan barely said anything during this yeah because it was like he was probably so bored. Oh God! Because they're like so, so. So I noticed a lot of military members are running, but they're Democrats. And Pat Buchanan's like, "Oh my God! I had all this stuff about the swimming pool at Auschwitz, and I'm just not going to be able to talk." When about are it. we going to talk about Dresden? Yeah, he just he, Pat Buchanan had all this shit where he's like. I have a list of all my favorite members of the SS who were honorable, by the way. (laughs) And it just, all it is is just Mark Penn talking about, like, you know, Arby's voters. Yeah, awful. Uh, At one point, the, the, the horrific, just shambling, towering mountain of Bill Bennett uttered the phrase, if I were a suburban woman, and that's when, like, I, I just honestly, like, it was yeah, like, I, I was dead. It was like Hellraiser. Yeah, we all dead. experienced yeah. brain death. <laughs> just ego death happened. Yeah. It was like, yeah, ayahuasca or something. What, yeah, oh, it was one of the most boring. <laughs> like, there are literally shows in other countries where it's like, it. it's a joke in a book, but it, in the book, but it is a real thing where it's just like, it shows a train going from one <laughs> destination. That would honestly be so much better than this. Well, that's calming to watch. This is just like... Ugh, it's like you're, you're on even despite how dull it is there's just like a a certain air of tension because yeah you know Pat Buchanan is just thinking about it was a transit camp not a death camp <laughs> Pat Buchan- and then Molly just God knows what's going on in her yeah. head just like that backwards chant from Eyes Wide Shut is just permanently <laughs> on repeat that, that's, just, that's amazing you have two amazing like Molly Hemingway has some of the best takes oh ever yeah seen. and Pat like what can you Pat has it's been Pat. at it it's Pat <laughs> Pat has been at it for 50 years years just being like middle americans want a president who will stand up to the jews <laughs> the holocaust industry and it's like how do you have those two on and your show is literally the most boring thing on the streaming service just you know 
let him let him be real. And I love that it's called the wise guy. Yeah, yeah. because you know, they like, are yeah. trying to evoke sort of a mob. Because that's why it's at the table. Yeah, it's at a restaurant. It's exactly. like hey, you know, hey, it's like the guy. Sit, we're having a sit down, <laughs> and the thing is, that works when you have like the real, like the 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 steak and and hooker uh, bottles and models, like five minutes from us, cocaine heart attack guys, like uh, like that fucking Bo Eric Bowling and Eric Bo Diddle. Diddle, yeah, yeah, that Eric, those guys, those New York guys, yeah. But these guys, for the most part, are pencil neck DC twerps. That doesn't work. It's the wrong vibe. Oh my god, I, dude, Bo Diddle is not on Fox Nation. They need Insane. to give him a show he's too, he's too where good. he's just a uh, Rayos, Rayos, yeah. and yeah. Uh, yeah. like he's just it's, it's, his, uh, his macaroni. Yeah, and it's like the, his show is just that scene in Wolf of Wall Street where he comes <laughs> in and take, he's like taking pills and he's like. Last time you did this, you put your face in the macaroni. <laughs> How about that's yeah, called? It's called a uh, clean shoot with uh, Bo Deedle, where they say they talk about a police shooting, and wouldn't you know it, it was a clean shoot. Well, actually, they do have they, the Mark yeah. Furman diaries. It's we'll literally what that show is. <laughs> we'll get to Just Mark taking Furman. any like black child who was killed and being like, actually, he had a RPG. We'll get to the Mark Furman show in a second, but Bo Deedle must have a talk show on Fox Nation. If fucking these fucking corpses can have one, we need to no. see. Oh, but that's I think that's the point of Fox Nation. I mean, you know what I, I realized during this? Like how what a talent Sean Hannity is compared to just Todd Starnes. It's, just yeah. nothing. He has nothing. He has absolutely no like Sean Hannity has this like confidence when he gets on. He's like Democrats uh say that they're not racist, but they're racist to Republicans. And it's like he's just so confident that well, he has it's, this it's all the working ring. out he does with Chuck Liddell, yeah, his you know, new like, street yeah. style of MMA. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just like these. Are, this is the B team for oh, sure. Th- this Everyone is the B on this team. End, yeah. Okay. Let's. Well, you mentioned Starnes. Let's get to Starnes. He's got a show just called. Bad. He's got a show called Starnes Country. This just again. His his just. We're the only county baby. in the only county in America where every citizen is his own zip code. <laughs> <laughs> you sit around Starnes County. You sit. Around, folks, he's fat. But he also has. The most like pipsqueak baby face as well. Yeah, he has a I wouldn't say gravelly voice, more of a gravy voice. But <laughs> he's uh, no, he has like a sort of smooth, deep voice that is smooth like gravy. Now it re- he reminds me of uh, uh, Stefan Heck said this said this this week to Eric Erickson, but I think it applies just as well to Todd Starnes. He said, "How do you have time for all this when you have to keep alerting people that a Warner Brothers cartoon is over?" <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> But uh, so it, it's Todd Starnes, and it comes on. And there's like a countrified font underneath it that's like sort of cowboy and gritty. Yeah, this is like, how we it, do it. That- contrast that with Todd Starnes' face is hilarious. Yeah. And then like it just opens up, and it's just again in the goofiest way imaginable, the most ghoulish propaganda like you could ever possibly conceive. He's just literally he literally says. This weekend, an ar- an invading army of illegal aliens attacked our border and our border patrol. It was an act of war. Yeah, it's like Augustus Gloop, but he's editing Der Sturmer. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrifying. And then, it, as we've made, as we've alluded to before, he goes on to literally make fun of children being uh, gassed. Um, and then he says, "Nobody's asking the real question." What kind of parent would put their kids in harm's way? Of course, the vast majority are grown men and teenagers who want to cause mayhem. They want to pull my pants down and laugh at my little penis. Yeah, I just I just hate Todd's. I've always hated Todd Starnes because this has always been his act, like being like, I'm just a good old country boy. I guess my only vice is grits. <laughs> but then, like, it was he had that book, God's Grits, and or no, that was Mike that Huckabee. Was Huckabee, who he was wrote, one of his panel guests. Uh, right no, on the it was show. called. Oh, what the fuck was the name? of Oh, they opened book? up my shirt. T- t- like they opened yeah, yeah, up my hood. Yeah, they my dipstick and egg gravy on it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah it was. It, it was like now. Nah, it was like now. Nah, I'm just a good old son. When I'm in New York City, and then it just like. Now, you know, when I was a kid, they hadn't invented, Jews hadn't invented homosexuality yet. <laughs> it just, you remember he had a, he had a, he had a piece for Fox, like when they, when he was still like, not just on Fox Nation, or he had some piece where like, he's like talking about living in Park Slope now. Yeah. And he goes to a supermarket and he's like in the cheese aisle and he's like, can you, there's like photos of him holding up and it's like a manchego and he's like, cool, can you believe this loony stuff? Like, yep. A man shake? What the heck is that? Yeah. What in tarnation is this kind of cheese? And it's like, 
It's like, just, dude, it's, like, it's just, you're in as, a supermarket. As is always the case, these people who pander to the rube, idiot, American hayseeds are way more hateful and condescending to them than people like us could ever be. Like, Todd Starn's entire career is a huge insult to everyone from the heartland of this country because he shows absolute contempt for them at every level and thinks, I have to give zero effort and just do the barest, laziest signifiers to you fucking dumb farm animals and you will buy my shitty books and watch my disgusting face on television well i mean trump who like trump like not even trying Mm -hmm. just like he will get up there and be like we love we love just a whole country feast (laughs) got you down home country lasagna (laughs) and your Velveeta meal so good (laughs) and like and like yes sir we love you but Todd Starnes does it and Todd Starnes is just one of the least charming individuals ever put on TV and it shows like Todd Starnes got shit ratings at Fox News he was only on there because like Rupert Murdoch because he has dementia was like yeah this guy's good uh, and now he's at the kitty table. Yeah, no one's watching Todd I mean, Starnes except us. Well, that's the thing is the thing that we're really stressed about this is that it is. I'm going to predict. Maybe I'll be wrong. It's going to be a fucking failure because these people don't know how to use the computer. It's like we were talking about uh, uh, Alex Alex's piece this yes, week about the Alex Diamond and Lone Silk movie. Wrote an article about Diamond and Silk, Dummy Crats, Dummy Crats, which we're going to watch. I think. Yeah. Oh, we got we got to have it's, Alex it's, back it's on. It's only available to rent on Vimeo. Yeah. That's how you know let it's get, good. I'll, I'll, let me quote the thing. I, I wrote it down. I took a, a screenshot because it was so funny. So so it's only available on Vimeo. Uh, but And so old people who like, who they, they tell it like it is, you know, the, 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 those people, uh, they, they're buying it, but they're, they don't know what the hell Vimeo is. They assume that they're buying a physical, physical yeah. thing. So one of the messages underneath the Vimeo is, and this is in Alex's piece, quote, I paid nineteen ninety nine, and I thought it was on a DVD. It asked if you want to rent it or buy it, so I bought it, and now I don't know what to do. Love you, ladies, but this is very misleading. So, guess I lost my money. This, so they think, <laughs> wait, do they literally think that Diamond and Silk just like made a fake? And for, yeah, they're like, apparently fine with yeah. it. That's how much All these right, are you, hogs. You got one over on me, Diamond and like, Silk. Yeah, you got me again, girls. Well done. It's $20, yeah. too. Holy shit. Yeah. I just so, got- there's no way. Like, signing up to watch something on the internet. And then navigating a website to find your programs? Yeah. Yeah, no. It's no not, not many yeah, people it's are not going to. Well, like, not, a, a good chunk of it is pitched to a younger audience. And we'll get like we, me- them are we mentioned uh, Tommy. And then we're going to talk about Tyrus in a second. And then like the fact that Greg Gutfeld has literally a dozen shows on yeah. Fox Network, on Fox Nation. And he is like one of like, the youngest people on that yeah, network. And, and he's, and he's 50. like 55. Yeah. Greg Gutfeld is like, yeah, he's like Ace. It's like Ace Rothstein's show. <laughs> 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 and now the Greg Gutfield dancers. <laughs> oh, we love to see them, folks. Folks, it's Prussian blue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They're woke now, dude. Yeah, uh, but you know, when we were, uh, all the Greg Gutfield things, and like, and then just the Fox Nation concept in general is like we were saying. Imagine the rapist dinosaurs who run the Fox network. This is their idea of what like is cool and like an for an internet audience that right you can have I mean, on your phone i mean you've probably seen greg gutfeld just like his jokes are like oh, i'm gonna wear one of those horse head masks or like yeah my gender is an attack helicopter like that type of shit you're like who even, like even right wing people don't like find this entertaining or funny but yeah it's the 90 year old rapists who run fox news are like this guy's hysterical He's not afraid to go after anyone. Uh, two quick things. Two quick more things about the uh, Starnes Country show. Uh, Starnes played a clip of uh, some bald-headed psycho on Fox News, presumably a representative of, you know, uh, ICE or Border Patrol or something. Say the following sentence: "We did not use kinetic force on any children. <laughs> <laughs> we did not tactically separate any any juveniles." Uh, heads from their torsos. We have tactically ascertained uh, a kinetic grouping of children scenarios. <laughs> and then uh, the vast majority of the Todd Starn show, which we did not watch, uh, basically is just what he calls his all-American panel, which is just him having a conversation with David Bossy, Corey Lewandowski, and Mike Huckabee. Hell yeah. Why would, why, you, would uh, why, you- why would you have Mike Huckabee on with Todd Starnes? He does the Todd Starnes <laughs> thing better. It's like, true. Well, yeah, it's like, I mean, Mike Huckabee, he's like 
I yeah, he's just like they both do the same thing of being an animatronic jamboree bear <laughs> and racist, but like Mike Huckabee is objectively better at it. Like Mike Absolutely. Huckabee had a far more successful show. And no, career. no, if if they were all at the Country Bear Jamboree. Uh, Huckabee would be on the washboard in the middle of the band. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Todd Starnes would be like in the in the balcony. You know, he wouldn't even have an instrument. He'd just sort of be like waving, gawping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. he's like the greeter bearer. Yeah. I, I just had I just had a million dollar idea. Leonardo. We may not even we may have to cut this out because I don't want anyone stealing it. Uh, so it's just basically um, it's Oliver Stone's The Doors, but about a country bear jamboree band <laughs> there's like the van morrison of jamboree bear Mo- jim morrison oh what did he i said say van morrison okay well he was also a singer so i don't really see how that proved your point uh and oh, one last thing todd starnes introduced the all-american panel by saying it's the best looking panel on television which is just absolutely not true i mean i think he he was was joking. Joking. i know, I know. I mean, Corin Lewandowski has that square head that all Polish people have. Very desirable. But, uh, yeah, just an awful hog man just rolling around in butter for all to see. Yeah. You hate to see it. You just hate to see it. Yeah, David Bosey looks like a, a casino pit boss who is like a week from getting fired <laughs> for fucking stealing chips. Uh, all right, let, let's let's tear through the rest of them because we got to get to the the, yeah, the, the real the, the, the crown jewel. You subscribe, the, yeah. yeah. The reason that I, I well, I'm, I mean, I I caught a couple. I know uh, Will was taking notes, but I got a couple. Okay. Uh, there's Lou Dobbs Prostate Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, there's the Open Toe Shoe Report with Timberly Van Trunk and Butter with Sponge. <laughs> and of course, my favorite show. You've won a cruise. Send us your credit card number. <laughs> uh, Those are all good programs. There, man. Th- there's one show called uh, Meet Tyrus, and they're introducing this new character into the Fox News universe, Tyrus, who's a former WWE wrestler who became friends with Greg Gutfeld on Twitter and then became a perennial red eye guest who they're now trying to have his own show called UnPC. Uh, that's right, folks. You thought it was going to be PC? Oh, you are in for Oh, no. I literally turned on Fox News expecting a guy who's sipping a latte to tell me that Black Lives Matter and that he celebrates Kwanzaa. No, oh wait, wait you're telling me he's not PC wait a on sh- Fox News? Are, are you saying that this show isn't a safe space? It, uh, yeah, so it's just like I love the idea that it's like yeah, I have no idea. It's just a crazy se- series of events that I ended up on Red Eye. Just The show, like they were just it was like it was like I, when uh, the Irish came in off the boats and they got drafted into the Union <laughs> Army. That's that's kind of like the booking process for Red Eye. It's like, have you have you ever even been on like a podcast or anything? Yeah. Please come on, please, 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 please. There was somebody in Times Square next to the dude trying to get people to go to Caroline's, going, "Want to be on Red Eye? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you like to laugh and or be on television shows <laughs> at four in the morning? Mm-hmm. Uh, Gre- First of all, Greg Gutfeld. Just awful, awful. Just, just like his rat just face, is like disgusting, and it's like he's aging terribly, so he looks even worse than he used to. It's getting his face is getting puckered. His cheek honestly looks like an looks like an old person's ass. But basically, the uh, entire like there's puckering and cellulite. It's meet, meet Meet Tyrus was just an interview where Greg is interviewing Tyrus about how important a mentor Greg was in Tyrus's life, and they have amazing chemistry. They have amazing chemistry together. He says he's learned so much from Greg. He doesn't just bash people or make fun of them anymore. And he's evolved politically. Uh, most of it is just clips from Red Eye and showing them like hanging out together like backstage at Red Eye. And there is one detail that I really like where there's a painting of Greg Gutfeld, presumably in his office or something, that's like the portrait of Dorian Gray if it wasn't working and they were both <laughs> just becoming hideous yeah. together right. at the same time. In tandem. Just yeah. yeah, literally rotting. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, look forward to Tyrus. Uh, look forward to. I his gotta show. say, he, the guy he tells it like it is. He's not afraid to offend people That's when he big. tells uh, an, <laughs> an audience of white old racist shut-ins that black people should obey the police. Oh, that, that mean, is. He's not afraid to tell people like it is. That is how Tyrus went first got famous and really blew up. Is when his uh, he had a, a rant on Red Eye about how 
you must comply with the police and never resist arrest while wearing a shirt that literally, I'm not making this up, says my life matters yeah. with a brain on Giant it. Giant brain. Cool. So, that, I mean, this is a hack observation, but it is funny thinking about how these people glory in the idea that they hate safe spaces and trample sacred cows. And that this channel is fucking... It is the most safe space I've ever observed. There's not a single moment where any thought that goes against the conservative hive mind is entertained for a second. It's a hermetic bubble. It is the safest possible. It's the fucking Travolta's bubble from that fucking movie, Boy in the Plastic Bubble. Oh, I thought you meant Gotti. <laughs> Um, well, if, if, that, if, this is, if that is part of the conservative hive mind, there are corners of that mind that are like the dark, scary attic or basement. Yeah. And that is reserved for a show that is called The Furman Diaries, which is literally almost The Turner Diaries. Basically. It's it almost may as like, well they, be. like It's co- literally called The Furman Diaries. Almost, again, Diary of a Madman, just notes they're found in a serial killer's apartment. After Bridget Jones' crazy. diary. <laughs> yeah, shit like that. And the the episode it was just like the Mike Brown episode, and honestly, like I, we couldn't even watch it. Yeah, no, we it had to turn it off. It was just way too dark. Way too dark. So moving on from there, uh, there's the Dana Perino Book Club, where wouldn't you know it, she interviews Greg Gutfeld about his books. He is everywhere. <laughs> he is every single... Like, Greg Gutfeld probably stepped into a reactor a year ago, and they're like, we have found a way for you to be on seven different Fox shows at once. There's a, another show hosted by Rachel Campos Duffy just called Moms. This is... Mom, moms, moms was, like, paid advertising for Xanax. Like, it was just... It was one of the most insane things. That was the only thing that approached the other good show. Moms was... I mean, you said it was David Lynchian. Yeah, it was and, like... David, no, it was like a little bit of John Waters, a little yeah. bit of David Lynch, and that these like it's these five just insane looking women <laughs> who are either like really keyed up or like slurring. And yeah, sort of everyone slow-mo. was well, well, uh, well medicated. I mean, that place was like that was like the waiting room at JFK's doctor's office. <laughs> Everybody was on some real shit. Yeah, mom, moms is like just moms. Yeah, yeah mom. <laughs> Moms was it was definitely the most interesting thing on there besides one thing obviously but it was they were like every other show it just seemed like just a really old person trying to figure out what young people like like hey why don't we do YouTube but it's on our own shitty proprietary video service that buffers at 480p for half the video uh but with Moms that was like the Fox sort of bird brain Xanax person thing I I love where it's just like just a bunch of ladies who are just you know it's 3 p.m. they're on bar three and they're like why we should talk about this <laughs> the things yeah you, know, you have kids is different just have a show about it <laughs> it's just like Dana Perino her show I got a little bit of that suburban alcoholic vibe like the harsh suburban yeah, like, like, al- she literally said harsh- it's, a, it's a book club where you don't have to read the book it, yeah with Dana Perino there are the, the other there are two Fox News characters right or three there is the rapist then there's the jamboree bear <laughs> and then there's like the mean suburban mom who has some sort of chemical dependency and is trying to give one or more of her kids an eating disorder <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> you know, I got a little like the, the Dana Perino one where she's like, don't worry, you don't have to read the book. It's like, whoa, this is awesome. Like, this is like a barbecue in like Kokomo, Indiana, where everyone hates each other. I love this. <laughs> but again, the conceit where she's going to talk to renowned author Greg Gutfeld about his Ooh. books, The Joy of Hate, The Untruths You Can't Say. And, you know, one was just called like The Office Checklist. And it was oh, about no. how to be good at work. One of Greg Gutfeld's books was really literally transcripts of his rants from the five <laughs> like, that's a, i'm reading a novelization of the show the five i gotta Fox. say uh i can't ima- i honestly when i hear there's a net there's a website you can go to on the internet and you can click on a video and find out what greg gutfeld's writing process is like <laughs> <laughs> great I, I mean there's no price too high yeah they're just uh, giving it away for that type of value. finally Finally, I, but I I did read earlier that one of the documentaries is also called Honor Killings in America. <laughs> you, you know that you know that big problem that yeah. like is like going on everywhere that nobody's talking about. Uh, that's finally going to be exposed. I mean, I'm assuming they're not referring to the overwhelming prevalence of uh, husbands and boyfriends killing their wives in this country. No, no, no. Uh, no after no, breaking up with them. Oh no, no, not that. 
or during custody disputes no, or things like that. Law. No, it's about your real law. It's about all the honor killings that are yeah, definitely happening. Yeah, the 10% happening. of America that's under <laughs> Sharia law. Okay. Finally, before we get into the crown jewel, there was just a quiz show just called Quiz Show with Tom Shalhoub. Ooh. A guy that guy, was, he looks like Andy Daly's death mask. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they booked him because like whatever just syphilitic or dementia addled executive thought they were booking Tony Shalhoub? <laughs> <laughs> and this is like a quiz show where Tom Shalhoub uh, gives just like uh, wild dumb questions to Fox News personalities. Who are up to the challenge of being as idiotic as the questions posed to them. Uh, the, the episode we saw was with... Uh, Fox biz- a Fox business superstar named like Alexa Navratilovas, some Greek broad. Okay, yeah. uh, and at the end of it, she she said, uh, "Oh, speaking of the movie Platoon with Charlie Sheen, she said that was a great book." Yeah, she Platoon thought Platoon is not yeah, based on a book. Platoon is not a book. She's probably thinking of Apocalypse Now, which is also based on Heart of Darkness. Right, but you know, I mean, I, I highly I, doubt. I, I love... highly doubt she's thinking of that too. I I just want to know what book she was thinking. I honestly, she was probably just assuming it was a book and she thought she'd sound smart if she said, oh, that was, I read the book. 